Um, so these guys are both certified Volvo mechanics and uh, I thought it'd be a good idea while I'm here next to the Volvo Penta to get them to help me out and um, we've had a little discussion with these guys boss their, their boss and um, a tribute to Jeremy Gruner that we are gonna see if we can try and fill uh, the filter in the um, the water cooling so now what I want to show you guys is really useful tool which is for holding um, is for holding the filter and getting it turned. So you can see that, that little piece of equipment. That is a, a very essential little filter clamp piece of equipment because getting that on and off, especially at sea, is just nearly impossible. Right, you've got a new one. So we have a bit of background noise, obviously, because I've got the aircon running for upstairs. But You'll notice that I've made some little modifications. I've I've labeled this. That's the that's the impeller which the guys are going to change for me later. Um, and the seacock is down here. So there's the the engine seawater. So let, might as well close it now. I'm going to start the engine. Usually you put a little label on the engine just before you do that. So agua por la mar is cerrado. Um, so now that means that. We should be able to open the filter. Now what I'm going to do later is that black filter you see in the center of your screen. That's the seawater strainer for um, the, the engine, obviously. So I'm actually going to move that down a little bit later once I get a bit of time. Because it means it's if you do get something stuck in, it makes it a little bit easier on the impeller. Um, remember from the Janset video. So the guy's creating a vacuum here. And they're sucking all the oil in. When you've got the right equipment and you're on shore, this makes it a lot easier. But guys, are just, I'll just show you the port that the guys are using. Let's see. That's the port. Don't know if you can see that. And now they're going to take this filter off. It's the diesel fuel filter. Let's take one off. Let's see. Disposing of that. There's a new one. Go on. I would normally put a little bit of fuel in it myself, but thankfully, just right next to where the guys are going to put it in, we've got that little black. That's a little black kind of manual fuel pump. So that'll help take the air out of the system before we start the engine. You can see, no matter what you do. It's a pretty messy job, and you can see from the sweat off the guys, it's also pretty humid and hot down here. The engine is cold. This is a pretty good space. You know, normally you can't sit next to an engine like this and just get access so easily. So the next thing that's going to be changed is the air filter. So it's just like a little jubilee clip. There you go. See the spring just stops the foam from folding in on itself. This young gentleman is going to open the impeller, which is going to be pretty tricky casing because um, you know that green paint means it's uh, it's pretty tough to open, especially also like I said, when you have a camera in your face, it's not easy. So I'm going to give these guys, a cut them some slack and let them just get that casing off. So it's just this circle that you see here. Um, we're basically going to get those four screws out um, and give these guys a little bit of a break. Once they do that, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like to change the impeller. So now's the really cool piece. This is slightly different from what Jeremy Gruner 
uh, one of the viewers has suggested I get but it's plastic but it's essentially the same coolant filter from the same website and um, you can see the guys just taking the impeller housing apart now so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure this up make sure that it's actually the right size it's at a later date I could maybe put this filter downstream to catch the impeller pieces so uh, let's have a look also see which way around the uh, the teeth go as well so that's that's actually is an important thing uh, having spoken to these guys Alejandro is the gentleman who's this gentle, these guys boss and he said it is actually very important which direction you put the, the the teeth because they can fracture if you put them in the wrong way at the beginning especially when it's dry and it just starts off so there you go so these guys are obviously Volvo Penta engineers so they've got the we've waited for the parts to come That is the impeller that's just come out. I'm going to save that for an emergency because it looks pretty, pretty undamaged. But it's good drills just to, to put a new one in, which is there, and we're going to put a new seal in as well. Uh, so hope, hope you guys can see that. But yeah, there's a seal that kind of basically goes on the on the fascia. Small screwdriver. I've taken the seal. It's here. There it is. Uh, it's just sitting on the on the uh, on the top of the engine here. And the new impeller is about to go in. That's it. Like I said, obviously it's pretty important that you've got the sea cock closed, which it is. And just for those that are not really sailors or that savvy in these things, how you know that's closed just by looking at it. The flow, you can see the flow of the pipe. You always, if it's closed, it's perpendicular. So it's obviously perpendicular to the flow now. That's how you know that that's closed. That usually applies for almost all other things. So the guys have put a bit of um, lubrication on the seal and then s setting it back into the housing of the impeller. There you go. So yeah, we just got the impellers back in and we're gonna put the seal around the, rock, around the rim of it, close it back up again. That's pretty much, uh, Okay, got to clean the the, um, the strainer. Just have a look in the strainer, and uh, let's, might just check to see. We'll take these Jubilee clips off, maybe, and then just see if Jeremy's filter is going to work. It's forever going to be known as Jeremy Gruner's filter. <laughs> so the guys are just finishing up here. Um, we're uh, I always carry lots of uh, spare oil on board, and one great thing about the Volvo Benta D275 that nobody really tells you is that you only need to carry one type of oil. Uh, the same oil is used in the main engine and the transmission. Uh, I can't remember the numbers at the moment, but I think it's the WD da la 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 51, whatever. So the guys are just checking the levels here and I think we're pretty close. And then I've asked the guys also to uh, change the coolant. So the next step after this is done, we're going to change the coolant, and um, this is you know, this is all the coolant in this section here. So uh, the guys are just going to show me. That's one thing I don't know how to do myself, to be honest. And I'm being a bit lazy if I'm totally totally honest with you guys, getting these guys to help me out. But they've got all the right equipment, um, and uh, you know I, I need to use some of this coolant and oil anyway, because having been down here in the heat for too long, it will go off. Uh, I would I would have thought. So I may as well use it up. I have it, plenty of it spare. And of course, when I go to sell this boat, this is handy. Me recording this as evidence for you folks and also for the any potential buyer. So that's it. That's all we've got to do for this landmark really. So these guys are gonna show me, just in case of an emergency, how to um, take out this coolant. And I've got pre-mixed coolant already. I always carry pre-mixed coolant with me just in case I lose some or a pipe bursts and I don't have too much water. And uh, so let's see, how does this go? 
So it's a little bit tricky for you to see here, uh, but the guys are just gonna take that hose off, which is the coolant system. And the boys have explained to me that, um, you know, basically the, um, the clamp comes off, the coolant goes up, up around here, and then back again, cools the turbo, in through the heat exchanger, and the whole thing starts again. That's basically it. I just started the engine for about 20 seconds to uh, get all the coolant out of the system um, and that was what was needed just to run you know the coolant pump for a, a few seconds uh, just to get all that old coolant out and actually there's quite a strong smell like a sulfury smell I haven't started the engine for a while but yeah I definitely think it was a good idea to, to change the coolant and the guys are just reconnecting the hoses the one remaining hose and putting everything back in place and then we're gonna up with some new coolant in this this side here so yeah I'm, I'm learning as i'm going along here obviously i've never changed out the coolant so i think that was a very worthwhile exercise i can see just i don't know whether you can see the shine off that coolant but yeah it, it, it doesn't smell like coolant normally does for me but with the bikes we would change the coolant quite regularly so the guys are basically see this black pipe right in front of your screen now so they're just taking it all off and then we run the, the engine just for a few seconds to try and get all the old dirt dirty deposits out of the coolant system and then we're going to put new coolant inside so there we go i learned something new every day so they're pretty pretty meticulous about getting all the deposits and all the rubbish that was in the coolant pipes getting it all out and then we get some totally fresh coolant and so i'm just about to run up now and switch on the engine for a few seconds so as always, I'd just like to finish up with something different. We're on a broad reach, deliberately adding miles to get a good, better VMG on our way to Chiapas, having crossed the Tuantepec region right now. And you can see over my shoulder, the hull is flying. I hope you can see that on the camera. The hull is flying. But I wanna say a quick thank you to Mal H and Jeremy Gruner and all our channel members. Thanks for your support. Um, now, Jeremy, although your filter that I received in the post, it's actually too big a diameter uh, for the generator, so I stripped it down and used the gauze. So it hasn't gone to waste. So we stripped the gauze and we've inserted it into the, uh, you know, to the, the generator, the gen set itself. Um, so the principle of, of use of straining the impeller parts is going to be effective should my impeller break again. So thank you for the idea and the advice and uh, hope to see you guys commenting in the next episodes.